Okay, we're going to look at applications of systems, which is another way to say we're going to work on word problems today. When we're setting up word problems, it may be helpful to consider a situation where we swap the known quantities and unknown quantities, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. When we're writing down our computations, it's important that you write them down on one line, but it's not really necessary that you actually perform the computations in order to see what we're doing. So let's take a look at an example. In example one, a store advertises two phones. One of them sells for $650 and the other for $800 each. If they sold 15 of the lower priced phones and five of the higher priced phones, we're asking uh, for the total number of phones sold that day and the total dollar amount of sales for that day. So the total number of phones should actually be really easy. There are 15 of the lower priced phones and then we can just add to that the five higher priced phones. Yes, they sold the total of 20, but it's more helpful for us to look at it as 15 plus five. Okay, the second thing is the dollar amount of sales for that day. So there are 15 $650 phones, and so the total amount of sales for the lower priced phones is $15 times $650. And then we can add to that the total amount of sales for the more expensive phones, which would be five phones times $800 each. So let's see how that works with a word problem where we have variables involved. One day Cole's store sold 45 pens, one kind at $8.50 each, and one kind at $9.75 each. In all, they took in $398.75. There were X lower priced pens and Y higher priced pens sold. So if we look at it the same way, way that we did in example one, the total number of um, pens, actually that should say pens sold, is X lower priced ones plus Y higher priced ones. And then we're told that that total is 45 pens. So the number of lower priced pens plus the number of higher priced pens should equal the total number of 45. Now we can also look at how much money was taken in. If each of the lower priced pens cost $8.50, I can take that $8.50 and multiply by the number of lower priced pens to determine the dollar amount that's total for the lower priced pens. Add to that the dollar amount for the higher priced pens, which is $9.75 times Y, and that should equal the total dollar amount of sales for both sets of phones, or both pens rather. That's $398.75. If you wanted, you could alternately put that second equation in the form 850x plus 975y is equal to 39,875. In effect, just multiplying the entire equation by 100. All right, so I want you to um, try this next one on your own. Uh, there's a piece of information missing, so I'm going to write that piece of information in here. The piece of information is that a grain uh, storage warehouse has 30 bins total. Some hold 20 tons of grains and grain, and the rest hold 15 tons of grain each. And there are X 20-ton bins and Y 15-ton bins. The extra information is that they hold a combined 550 tons. Okay, pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, the first equation that we can write is that there are 30 bins total. So the number of 15 ton bins plus the number of 20 ton bins should equal 30, which is the total number of bins. 
And if we think about how much grain they hold, the 20 ton bins hold 20 tons times the number of bins. Add to that the 15 ton bins, which hold 15 tons times the number of bins. And that should equal to the number of tons that they all hold together, or the total, which is 550 tons. Okay, let's take a look at a different type of example. In example three, we, you are at the gym and we're loading metal plates onto your dumbbell to vary the weight being lifted. The smaller plates weigh 10 pounds and the larger plates weigh 35 pounds. So we're going to find the total weight for a dumbbell with three smaller plates and two larger plates. Let's attack that one first. Find the total weight for a dumbbell with three smaller plates and two larger plates. Well, the weight of the three smaller plates is 3 times 10. And the weight of the two larger plates is 2 times 35. If we add those together, we should get the total weight. The other piece of information said that there was a dumbbell that had four smaller plates and three larger plates. So the four smaller plates weigh 4 times 10 and the three larger plates weigh 3 times 35. If we add those together, we get the total weight for that dumbbell once it's loaded. All right, now we'll take a look at a problem with variables in it. A salesperson sells two fishing reels and five rods for a total of $270. The next day, the salesperson sells four reels and two rods for $220. X is the cost of the reel in dollars, and Y is the cost of a rod in dollars and we're to write a system of equations. So if we think about the cost for this first day, the salesperson sold two fishing reels and five rods. So what was the price for the two fishing reels? Well, that would be two times the price of one fishing reel, which would be two times X. And the five rods cost five times the price of one rod, which is y, so 5y. If we add those together, we should get the total cost for two reels and five rods, which should equal 270. On the following day, the salesperson sold four reels and two rods for $220. So the cost of the reels was four times the cost of one reel, and the cost of two rods was two times the cost of one rod. If we add those together, we should get the total cost for that day. And there's our system of equations. I'm going to put braces around it since it's a system. OK, pause the video and try the next example. OK, if you are the caterer, you're going to charge a fixed cost for every party that you plan, plus you're going to charge a certain amount for each guest. So at the first party, the caterer charges X dollars for the fixed cost, and then they add to that 25 times the cost for one guest would give us the cost of 25 guests. So there's a fixed cost just for setting up the event, and then 25 times Y for the cost of the 25 people who attended the event. That should give us the total cost of the event, which is $300. The cost to serve 40 guests is $420, so that would be our fixed cost plus 40 times the cost per guest, and that should give us $420. Just as a side note, this would be a great system to solve using the elimination or the addition method. I would just take one of the two equations and multiply through by negative one and then add them together and X's would cancel. Okay, let's take a look at a problem involving distances and rates and times. Syrah drove 40 miles in an average rate of 20 miles per hour and then another 60 miles in an average rate of 40 miles per hour find the total distance for the trip and the total time for the trip. 
Her, so her total distance would be 40 miles for the first part of the trip and 60 miles for the second part of the trip, which would be 100. But again, we're just writing down the computation. Now let's think about the first part of the trip. For the first part of the trip, Syra drove 40 miles at a rate of 20 miles an hour. If she drives 20 miles an hour, it will take her two hours to drive 40 miles. So the time for the first part of the trip is two hours. How can we use the numbers that we were given, 40 and 20, for that part of the trip in order to get two? We can divide. So 40 divided by 20 gives us the time for that part of the trip. How long did the second part of the trip take? Well, that one was 60 miles at a rate of 40 miles an hour. Well, if we can go 40 miles in one hour, then to go 60 miles, it'll take us one and one half hours. How can we get that time of one and one half? Again, we can take the distance 60 miles and divide it through by the rate, which is 40 miles. So that should give us the total time for the trip, adding the two times together. All right, in our next example, Miles drove the first part of a 56-mile trip at a rate of only 24 miles per hour, a little bit slow, but he was able to maintain a speed of 30 miles an hour for the rest of the trip. He made the entire trip in two hours, and he drove X miles for the first part of the trip and Y miles for the second part. So we're to write a system of equations that could be used to find X and Y. So I'm going to put these in braces for our system. So we can uh, look at this the same way that we did in the previous example. There's a total distance for the trip. So miles drove X miles for the first part of the trip and Y miles for the second part of the trip. So the total number of miles was 56. The second equation will be a total time for the trip. His total time for the trip is his distance divided by his rate. That would be um, x would be the distance for the first part of the trip divided by 24 miles per hour, and then the distance for the second part of the trip is y divided by 30 miles an hour. That would give us the time for the second part of the trip, and that should equal the total time of 2. As a side note, if you like the organizational method of writing the information that we've got in a box, you can use that in order to help set up this system of equations. There are two parts for the trip, the first part and the second part. And our rates are measured in miles per hour. That means that in the second column, we should be multiplying through by a number of hours in order to cancel the denominators. And then that would leave us with a result that would be measured in miles. So if we look at the information in the problem, there were x miles in the first part of the trip and y miles in the second part of the trip. The rate for the first part of the trip was 24 miles per hour, and the rate for the second part of the trip was 30 miles per hour. Now we have to find the missing information in that middle box. And if we're looking for one factor, we can take the result from a multiplication and divide by the other factor. That would give us x over 24 for our hours column. Take a look at the multiplication. 24 miles per hour times x over 24 hours should equal x because our 24s will cancel in the multiplication. Similarly, in the second part of the trip, the number of hours should be y over 30. And if you check that multiplication, 30 times y over 30 equals y. Now we can address totals. There's a total time for the trip, and that total time is 
two hours. We just have to look at the units to make sure that we've got the correct column. And then there's a total distance for the trip, which is 56 miles. Okay, try the next one on your own. Okay, in this problem, there are two distances. Uh, Margaret's jogging distance is X, and her walking distance is Y, and her total distance is 14 miles. And then we have an equation for times. Her time for jogging is X divided by 6. That's her distance divided by her rate plus, and then the time for walking is y divided by 3, and the total time is 3 hours. Here's another way to look at this one. I'm trying to offer you several options if you want to look at things differently. We know that distance is equal to rate times time. So if we're looking for an expression for the time, the time will always be the distance divided by the rate. We can just take both sides of that equation, distance equals rate times time, and divide by r. Okay, in example 7, we have two different kinds of sweet tea that are being mixed together. So they have different amounts of sugar. Brand A is very sweet. It had, contains 10% sugar, and brand B contains only 5% sugar. We're mixing together brand A and brand B to get something that's in between in the uh, amount of sweetness. So 20 ounces of brand A are going to be mixed with 40 ounces of brand B. That means that the total number of ounces in the mixture would be 20 plus 40. Now let's take a look at the sugar content. The 20 ounces of brand A have 10% sugar. So how much of brand A is dissolved sugar? That would be 10% of the 20 ounces. So we can use the decimal form of 10%, 0 0.10. And then how much of brand B is dissolved sugar? That would be 5%. 0.05 times 40. Be careful when you're writing 5% that you write it as 0 0.05 rather than 0 0.5. 0 0.5 would actually be half or 50%. All right, let's look at a similar problem here. Chemical A is 60% acid and chemical B is 36% acid. X ounces of chemical A are mixed with Y ounces of chemical B and we're producing a mixture that contains 120 ounces of a chemical that's 52% acid. So when we're setting up our system of equations, I know there's a total for the amount of ounces. That is, we started with X ounces of chemical A and we added to it Y ounces of chemical B for a total number of ounces of 120. Now for the second equation, let's look at acid content. How much of chemical A is acid? That would be 60%, but whenever we say 60%, it's always followed by of something. So 60% of the X ounces are acid. Now let's look at chemical B. Chemical B is 36% acid, so 36% of the Y ounces would be acid. And then that should equal the amount of acid in the mixture. The amount of acid in the mixture is 52%, but 52% of what? Would be 52% of 120 ounces. So we have two equations, one of which is telling us the total number of ounces, and the other of which is telling us the total amount of acid.
Okay, try this last one on your own. Okay, in this problem we have two metal alloys that are 6% zinc and 16% zinc. There are X kilograms of the first alloy and there are Y kilograms of the second alloy. We're going to melt them together to produce a total of 150 kilograms. So the amount of one plus the amount of the other is equal to the amount in the mixture. Our second equation will deal with the zinc content in each of these metals. 6% of the first alloy or of X kilograms would be zinc. Add to that 16% of the second alloy or 16% of Y ounce, Y kilograms would be also zinc. If we add those two zinc contents together, it should equal the total zinc content of the uh, mixture of these two alloys, which would be 14% of 150 ounces. And that's it for today's lesson.